May I remind you that trading is risky and not suitable for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. Please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money you cannot afford to lose. Welcome to Quantbox Daily, Thursday, October 20th. We're about an hour before London Open. Let's jump in and have a look and see what are we doing today. So looking at our Quantbox Pro, just going through our currency pairs, euro dollar, still a strong sell. We're going to look at everything technically in a moment because uh, technicals are slowing down quite significantly. However, we're still getting an indication that our bias is bearish, which means that we're taking short-term trades and we're getting in at resistance. And we're being super, super careful to verify everything on lower timeframes. Make sure you're not losing money at this time. So uh, you can see here, Euro dollar still a strong sell. And uh, news-wise, we've got some news coming out of uh, Germany and France today, some medium-tier news. Let's see what else is on the calendar today. We've got some European Union. Oh, European Council meeting. And some more low-tier news out of various European countries. We got some low news out of the States later. Some more US news out of the States, medium and low. And then we've got quite a lot of very important data coming out of the States later on today. Okay, so keep an eye on that. We've got a speech later on. Some more speeches later on. You want to pay attention to those. Okay, cool. So overall, quite a full docket on the, on the state side of things. Um, some Euro news. So uh, Euro dollar coming in at minus seven on our total score. You can see that we're still indicating further down on our technicals. We'll take a look at the charts in a moment. Looking at pound dollar. We're, we're still bearish on pound dollar, fundamentally, indicating some sideways moves on the uh, technical side. The USD CAD is still a buy. You can see predicting higher up. Aussie USD is still a sell, predicting further moves down. And Kiwi dollar is still neutral. Okay, yen pairs. We've seen neutrality across the board this week. Let's see if anything has changed. So still neutral on Aussie yen. Still neutral on CAD yen. Still neutral on Euro yen. Still neutral on Pound yen. And still neutral. Oh, look at that. Kiwi yen is a buy. All right. We'll take a look at that in a moment. So we've got one of the yen pairs coming in at a buy. And the rest of the yen pairs are neutral. We're going to leave the rest of the yen pairs alone. I don't trade when there's a neutrality in fundamentals. But Kiwi yen, we will definitely take a look at. So Kiwi yen is a buy, but Kiwi dollar is neutral. Interesting. Let's take a look. So one of the things, we'll start with Euro dollar. One of the things I'm paying attention to is this daily time frame, right? Just look at, what, look at the story that the chart is telling you. We have this beautiful bearish trend from last year all the way down, lots and lots and lots of money was made there. And then coming up, coming down, no lower low. So be careful if price has made a lower low, be careful of trying to sell lower highs. Okay, you can see we, we've broken the, the story of the trend, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, and then suddenly no lower low, lower high, and then no lower low. So be very careful inside here. This is consolidating. Look at a four hour time frame. You can see it just, it's quite messy. Okay. You've definitely got some consolidation going on here. And the tricky thing is that price is coming off resistance. Okay. Clearly. And then price is coming down to support. Okay. Now you can see that price closed at the support over here. And then price broke that support. Price breaks that resistance, doesn't test it as support. We've also got price breaking this resistance and not testing that support. So being a bear fundamentally means that you're looking for resistance. Where would you find resistance? Well, price is not currently at resistance. Look at the four-hour candle. 
you can see the four hour candle did not close that resistance. The 2155 are useless to you right now because you do not have a trend. So right now you would not be using a FIB, you would not be using moving averages. In fact, even pivot points are pretty useless to you right now because of the lack of trend. That doesn't mean you can't trade or that you don't have trading opportunities. It just means that you are gonna be very, very short term in your trading positions. If you're in over here, um, and you're shorted there, your stop is just above the R2. Right now, you would be holding your trade at risk. No reason to move to break even just yet. The only reason I would move to break even is if price has then made a lower low, lower high, and continued going down, and then I'd move to break even. I don't move to break even because I'm scared of losing money. I move to break even because I just want to protect my trade in case price, when bearish, pulls back. You know, there's any kind of like whipsaw or anything like that. I mean, ultimately, what you really want to do is be able to move your trade from risk to map, all right? Because these then you lock in some profit for the risk you've been taking. Now, what's interesting is if you look at this, this range over here, price breaks out of this range. And yesterday, we don't test the bottom of that range. We come straight down into support. We're now coming up, right? So ignoring the 2155 over here, these moving averages, and looking at price right now, where do you see resistance? Well, I see resistance up here. Okay. Of course, price can stop before that. And we'll take a look at it, an H1 time frame. If you could identify resistance somewhere else. But ideally, price pulling back to that resistance there. And what's nice about that is if price breaks that resistance, you wouldn't sell there. I'd be looking for a bias candle to close at that resistance. But I would also be keen on price coming up and closing at this resistance. Um, a weekly R1 is a pivot point, a bearish pivot point. So that's also resistance. But right now, in terms of the four-hour candle, which is the London bias candle, we haven't really closed that resistance. You've got this top of the range resistance over here. But I'd much prefer roll reversals, to be honest. And you can see here in the current structure, the sort of higher high, higher low, just structurally, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. So some bulls treating this as a higher low. And of course, bears seeing this as a lower high. So we'll be waiting for this to pull back for a lower high. So you've definitely got what seems like the middle of a range here. Be careful of that, okay? Ultimately, my, my preference in terms of when I trade, if I'm selling, I'm either selling a lower high, which is preceded by a lower low, or I'm selling at the top of the range. So looking at this right now, I say, well, if I was to sell at the top of the range, that would be up here. And if I was to sell you know, at a roll reversal, that would be over there. So there really are two places I'd like to sell Euro dollar, see if I get that opportunity. In terms of the daily chart, I would not be using a 21 EMA because you can see here price coming down, closing at this support, not making that lower low. So if price doesn't make a lower low, I've got no business trying to sell a lower high. Okay. And um, you know, in terms of resistance, well, you've got your daily pivot point, you've got your daily M3. Look at the confluence of daily M3 with that roll reversal over there. Okay. If you got into a scalp yesterday, you waited for price to break out of that range and you saw this green candle pull back up and close at the bottom of that range you could have scalped down and then today you probably took profit on that scalp because you've got a counter trend trade happening today so if at asia if you're doing a counter trend trade you're buying down here the daily m2 you're taking profit at the daily central okay stock standard counter trend trade nothing wrong with that but you recognize the fact that you're just gonna be doing some short-term trading lots of rabbit hunting at the moment be careful Right, you want to let your winners run, but you want to know when it's good to do that. When you've got low volatility, you are less likely to let those winners run. Okay, not because you're scared, but because you're wise to what the market conditions are. So, looking at this, you get price closing in the daily central, verify lower time frame. You get price closing over here, verify lower time frame. You get price closing all the way up here, verify lower time frame. You get price closing at the daily M4, verify lower time frame. Okay. Right now, though, again, going back to my four hour, looking at the fact that this, the, the four hour candle is not closed at resistance means that I'm less likely to expect a trade at London. All right. I need to set things up on the other time frames. So I get my strategy for my daily, my H4 or my H1. I verify everything on an M15 time frame. So M15, you can see here, if you look at this chart, you'll notice that price breaks up, pulls back down. We haven't had a higher low yet. Okay. So you want to ultimately, whatever you're looking at in terms of the high time frames, if you see price support or resistance, or whatever the case may be, you're then verifying that with higher lows and lower time frames. But now you can see we didn't get that 
um, on the 15 minute chart in terms of the counter trend trade. And so you either, there's no, there's like a, there's a pullback over here for this candle. You could have used that as an indication of, okay, fine, price breaks resistance and it becomes support. And that could be your indication of taking this trade at the daily M2, getting out to the central. Or you're sitting here waiting for that pullback high or low. Now be aware of the fact, don't get lost in confusing your bias. Fundamentally, you are bearish. So you are waiting for resistance and you can really, really just wait for that lower low, lower high. Yesterday, you can see here is that candle on the H1 chart pulling back that 21 EMA price, pull, pulled back, broke out. I wouldn't have, sorry, it's actually over there. I wouldn't have taken this trade over here because you're still range bound. If you wait for price to break out and pull back and you, you saw this over here, that's where you would have got in, okay? And that's that scalp down, taking profits today at Asia, right? But ultimately, you know, waiting for those lower lows, waiting for those lower highs, that's the way to trade, right? Make sure you've got that price action. Aussie USD, let's take a look at Aussie USD. So over in daily perspective, we're now, instead of pulling back all the way up to your resistance, which I would have really liked, that role reversal at 21 EMA, we're now consolidating down here. Be careful of the range, okay? Be careful of the range. Look at that. That does not look like optimum trading conditions, Okay. If you got in over here at the start of the week, maybe you stopped to break even, maybe you locked in a bit of map, you might have been knocked out already, maybe you took profit over here at the R1, whatever you did, um, right now is not ideal to be trading. Uh, you can see here we are bearish on the Aussie USD. So uh, looking at resistance, you can see the four hour candle for London, not closing at resistance. So I wouldn't be looking for any sells at London. In terms of further on in today's session, New York, et cetera, et cetera. You can see here now suddenly traders, you know, looking to sell at this 21 EMA. I don't like the fact that price closed at support. I don't see that as a lower low. And so therefore I wouldn't look to sell the lower high. Okay. Um, in terms of where resistance is, well, you know, price action is really messy, but you got this role reversal over here. You've got the daily central, you got daily M3. So if you see price closing at resistance, go to lower time frame and verify that trade. Okay, but be very, very careful, guys. You can see the market has slowed down quite considerably. This is not a good time to be losing money. Taking a look at the uh, pound dollar, we remain bearish fundamentally. You can see here, look at that daily chart, also consolidation. All right. So we've stopped making lower lows and lower highs. We've now consolidated. And you want to be very careful of that situation. You can see the same story being told across all of the dollar pairs. Okay. 2155 are useless inside low volatility. The four hour candle not closing any type of resistance. Where's resistance? Well, I mean, you got, you got roll reversals over here, but they're not the most amazing because you want to ultimately a roll reversal should be a point where price makes a higher low and then goes on to make a higher high. Here you've got price bouncing around. Be careful of that, but it's okay. If you see price at resistance, you think it is resistant, just, lo just verify lower time frame. okay? Now we've got price over here bouncing with 21 EMA. I don't see price closing at support. Or actually, if you look over there, let's take a look and see. Yeah. I have concerns about that over there. Looking left, you can see there's that, that support over there. I really would like to see a lower low before I sell a lower high. Okay. Look at your daily, nice and clean. No lower low, I'm not going to sell a lower high. I'd wait for this to, to sort itself out, or you trade at the top of the range. Okay. So if you can identify the top of the range, where would that be? Well, it's difficult to see because right now you've got, you got a very tight range over here, broader range over there, broader range over here, broader range over there. Well, potential depends on price comes down and respects the support, but ultimately inside here, very, very narrow. Okay, be careful. You can see buying at the central, coming out the weekly R1, coming all the way down, not ideal trading conditions. You might want to just chill and not waste your money. Kiwi dollar neutral, USD CAD still a buy. You can see here on the daily time frame, very much consolidating. Okay. Be very, very careful of that. You can see here lots of opportunity to lose money inside here. Very, very quiet. Just take a chill pull. Um, in terms of the Kiwi dollar, we are neutral. Aussie yen neutral. CAD yen neutral. Euro yen neutral. Pound yen neutral. Kiwi yen a buy. I do not like the position for the buy. I like the position for the buy down here. Unfortunately, down here, we were neutral on the fundamentals. So I wouldn't have done anything down there. Um, up here, looking at a buy, no thank you. Not interested. Definitely not interested. 
okay you could now you could now decide to counter trend trade i told you earlier this week last week the only place where i counter trend trade is above the r2 or below the s2 okay at the end of the week month or day otherwise not for me but you can at least look at the technicals and say okay i've got fundamentals saying buy technicals wah, wah, not right now not in position for a buy okay Future versions of quant box will take things like position into consideration. Right now, it doesn't. Um, it'll also take a lot more price action into consideration in terms of verifying bullishness and bearishness. So right now, it's a very solid fundamental tool. This technical data is going to go, go quite deep into technicals um, and uh, how that's analyzed. But at the moment, you have a bias. You can see the bias is by, and you look at the chart and you say, well, no, not right now. Thank you. So, I mean, you could ignore your fundamentals and you could decide to do counter trading, but ultimately, why? Why are you so desperate to make money? My, my thoughts are, you know, if you've worked really, really hard to generate nice capital in this market over here, why throw it away in low volatility, okay? It's not to say you just go to sleep and you stop paying attention to what's going on in the charts. You still pay attention, but just make sure that you verify. Get, if you're going to trade somewhere, you must get price closing and roll reversal, okay? Wherever that is. And ultimately, if you don't get anything high time frame, if you see price at resistance, you're looking for it over here on the M15 charts, okay? Be careful, stay safe, be patient. If you are patient and you are disciplined and you are controlled, you are like so, so much further than the majority of traders out there. Have a good day. Wish you all the luck. Best of luck and keep an eye on the news later. Cheers.